hopefully this is going to be a very interesting test. Um, basically, I recently started using these cheap immersion blenders to mix glazes and slip. It's not something I've done up until then. I'd always used the mixer attachment on my drill. It's a very good one. I'll see if I can find you the link because I particularly like this head for it. Plastic um, so it doesn't rust like some of the other cheap ones. Um, but I hadn't used an immersion blender. I figured it was basically going to be more or less the same. And it isn't because there's they're so much more aggressive. Um, so actually, you don't need to sieve things after you've mixed with an immersion blender where you do with the drill bit because this is so aggressive at mixing things. Uh, part of the reason I hadn't bothered is everyone always said the motors burn out really quickly. And I can see why, because obviously they don't like straining against anything. And I'll show you in a second, my, the, the one I've had for just a few months really, um, is starting to die already and I think that's from mixing thick slip with but so um, the reason that this is relevant is because Ryan from Midnight Ceramics I'll post a link they're a small glaze company making really interesting glazes you'll probably hear more about them from me soon because we're working on something together but he suggested to me that he thinks that um, the mixing is aggressive enough that it changes the behavior of some ingredients. And it makes perfect sense because the ingredients are ground to whatever grade, but they clump. So they go through, a, they don't pass through a sieve on their own. So titanium for me and tin are both pretty bad. They have to be sieved. Uh, if I don't sieve them, they get lumps. Obviously if I mix them with the immersion blender, as I said, it's aggressive enough that I don't have to sieve them. But the interesting thing is the immersion blender actually goes further than my sieves do. So I generally sieve to 80 to 100 mesh. This was sieved with 80 because I have a, a little lawn cup sieve, um, which is good for small test mixes, and that's an 80. So that's what I did, sieve to 80. Um, what's gonna be really interesting, so what the test for today is, is how differently it behaves sieved to 80 and then mixed with an immersion blender. Now I have also, as well as the cheap one, um, which is on its way out, I bought myself this variable speed one. A little bit extra, but um, it does change the speed a bit, not massively. You can hear the difference. I don't know what the RPM is, this one gives me a number and that's 15,000 RPM. This one doesn't. And then there is the added interest of it comes with a milk frother. Now, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show this on the video, but the milk frother is... So the plan for today is I am going to shake this to get it mixed. As I said, this has been through an 80 mesh sieve. Um, the reason I picked this one in particular is because it's got two titanium and one tin in it for a sort of pinky, I'll put a picture up and go ahead and test out to hand, sort of um, translucent pink. Now this glaze, this is my floating base of the five ingredients, um, will support a purple with a bit more tin and a bit more chrome in it, uh, but I wanted a sort of light pink, so that's what this is. But um, you can sort of see when you go in for a macro photo that there are smallish lumps of ingredients in it. So I, I think that mixing with the immersion blender is gonna change this fairly drastically. So I'm hoping this is gonna be the biggest change. I will also try it with the cobalt because that's most of my glazes use some variation of titanium and cobalt and I'm intrigued by that. But I reckon this is gonna be the one that gets the bigger change. So I'll just, run through it with you um, and then jump forwards in time till tomorrow so you can see what the results are but I'll have to wait. So uh, I've got these I think I've probably talked about them enough on videos but if, in case you haven't encountered them these are little Sterifeed things that the NHS 
um, distribute when you but it's just kind of baby stuff but I assume they use them for other things really useful 50 mil beakers if you can find anything like this they are great because textiles fit in them perfectly so you don't need too much glaze to dip which is very convenient um, what I will do is I want to pick um, I've got my bucket of textiles but uh, these are mixed up of towels that were thrown on a few different days so I need to find all of the same type of tile so that I've got comparable thickness and then I want to go comparable width as well so I know that my tiles are fairly consistent throughout that will do for this one same, no that's different okay so I've got some tiles and I will say that one, that one, that one, and that one are a fairly good set. So I've got four. And you want to weigh the test tiles and mark them with if you get an underglaze liner pen. The reason I weigh the test tiles is it lets me have a similar application. Uh, for a glaze like this, I want to do, I'm going to do about four, four and a half grams of glaze. Um, and you can work backwards from how much water you added. I know I added 100 grams of water for 100 grams mix. So if I went with four grams of glaze mix, that's two grams of dried glaze powder. So it lets me know that the test tiles are all going to be the same. So I will call this one... Uh, I'll just call it A. So I've put glaze and A on zeroed. This video can act as part memory job for me, but should be. So if I keep this full to the 50mm line, then I should get similar depth as well, which will make them even more comparable. Five second dip gets me 5.4 which is actually more than I was aiming for but that's gonna work well in terms of demonstrating movement so 5.4 is what we're aiming for five second dip that'd be interesting to see if that behavior changes as well so first thing I want to test is this mix oh and as I said I'll demonstrate how different things sound to so this one new mixer this one Not so happy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this with this on its slowest speed. I should have got everything. So repeat the process. Similar weight. So this is just going to be called B for obvious reasons.
eight, so that one's actually a little bit under. This is why weighing is very useful. So now a little bit over, but that's fine. Less over, so it's over by point two ish, whereas it was under by um, almost a gram. So you're looking for the same sort of ballpark, really. So C is that one on its maximum. Try to do this without knocking everything over. theory is that um, it's only certain ingredients that are affected by this and his idea is that it, you know it's fine you all you've got to be is consistent so if you like how it looks mixed with immersion blender then you could just carry on doing that just use an immersion blender for everything and I have thought about that and I reckon the easiest way to do it would be to find out which ingredients are sensitive so if he's right and it's tin and titanium just do those if you're mixing up a big batch rather than try and immersion blend the whole batch and make sure you've got everything just put all your titanium in one of these with some of the water and immersion blend that to get the fine mix of titanium first so that might be what i take to doing after after this experiment and depending on what the experiment proves um, Um, so it's just four test, hopefully escalating speeds. And I'll do cold cobalt as well, but I won't bother recording that. Um, and I will jump you forwards in time till tomorrow. Right, just unloaded the kiln. And the results are more different than I was expecting. So obviously you've just watched the previous section, but to reiterate, this is the mixture through an 80 mesh sieve. This is blended on slow speed, fast speed, and then the blender that I think is probably fastest. The glaze is otherwise identical, the application was otherwise identical, and the firing, they were all next to each other in the kiln. So as you can see, the amount of colour is vastly different, and that will be because the tin is not fully mixed in in that. So you've got clumps of tin, probably reducing the amount of available tin by well, I mean, it, it's obviously a very significant amount. Um, they are also quite obviously different when over black slip. You get so much more opacity with the um, the more well mixed front. I didn't notice anywhere near as significant a difference with the cobalt versions. So. Um, they're all looking pretty similar and then again over the black slip very similar I'll check the video if this isn't showing well enough I'll upload some macro photos so you can really see the difference but it seems that my titanium isn't as sensitive to it as my tin because that's the first one was the chrome tin um, with titanium as well and then finally I've got just pure titanium but this is four percent rather than the two and a half percent that's in the others um not so obvious on that side not vastly different but you can see some difference in the two again exactly the same glaze just mixed um with a that one is the 80 mesh and that's the highest speed of the variable speed blender so it does make a big difference uh, it makes a bigger difference to tin than titanium but it's definitely not something that you want to ignore with either of them.
because it is going to make a difference and if you've done your tests with an immersion blender it's going to be worth incorporating an immersion blender into how you mix your titanium into your main glaze mix. I realised after I showed you, well actually when I was cooking last night, that um, the immersion blender I've got here with the variable speed is more expensive than the one that I've got home. Um, but that's also variable speed and part of that is because when you search for immersion blender variable speed or adjustable speed um, this on Amazon this is the search terms seem to be very important and different terms will give it give you completely different results so um, I'm not sure what the optimum thing to search is I'll put a link to the one that I use at home because it's cheaper than the one that um, I used here and is otherwise the same basically uh, or very very similar at the very least um, <clears throat> but if you're not getting anything when searching for variable speed try adjustable speed and vice versa and then if it comes to it um, the one that I bought before doesn't say variable or adjustable it just says six speed so if you're looking if the ones that I link aren't available or you want to find alternatives and nothing much useful is coming up try those as search terms put in like um, 6 speed or 10 speed or 12 speed or something like that because that will give you the results where they haven't used the keywords that you're searching for but um, yeah big difference and obviously if you want to get more mileage out of your tin, bearing in mind how expensive tin is, you're obviously looking at a significant difference between those. This is 1% tin. So you've got a nice, I mean, I'm not sure how well the colours are going to show up on this, so I, I'll overlay a picture that, um, where I've made sure that it matches, but hopefully you can see at least the difference between those if not how nice, how much nicer the colour is. That's sort of a peachy, just starting to, to turn purple. And then you've got a nice, fairly reddy pink. Um, exactly the same ingredients, exactly the same firing, just the blender, that's all that's changed.